Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of the Politically Incorrect Podcast where freedom of speech comes to be abused and die. I am your host, Deceptive Cobras, and with me as always is the lovely co-host, the Baroness. Hi, hi. And today this is an impromptu podcast simply because I've got so much stuff I need to get done that I don't have time to do next week's podcast at its regular scheduled time. So I'm going to knock out something that's a bit of a subject that I want to talk about. There is a, a person I like to watch on YouTube by the name of uh, Sargon of Akid, A-K-K-A-D. And he likes to tear apart um, misogynists, feminists, um, you know, Gamergate, Lizard Squad. He likes to just analyze what the, the message they're trying to say and what they actually are saying. You know, he, he, he's a read between the lines kind of guy. And that's why I like the guy. Plus, he's British. Um, and he recently did one on male feminists and, and and the fact that they don't understand anything. So now my wife here, the Baroness, she is not a feminist. <laughs> no. <laughs> she doesn't understand feminism, most importantly, not because she's not un uneducated. It has to do with the fact that my wife, unlike feminists, know how to get a pay raise. <laughs> um, plain and simple one of the biggest issues with feminists is they say that we don't get paid enough the same as men well that's because men go up to their boss and say I want a pay raise I'm entitled to a pay raise um, the, 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 the law offices I used to work in um, annually everyone would get a pay raise but your pay raise was equal to the amount of good reviews that you got and each department had X amount of view uh, uh, reviewers. For example, legal had four, mailroom had three, uh, security had three, um, you know, and then the partners had five. You know, it, it it went on a specific scale. So if I went in for my re my review to see if what how much I'm eligible for a pay raise, and I got three good reviews, that's a three percent pay raise for that fiscal year. Right. Or I could choose to take it as a Christmas bonus. Okay. So I got options. Now, I worked in the mailroom, okay? I worked in the mailroom with a female co-worker. And she would always say to me, you know, how can I afford this, that, and the other when she can't? I said to her, do you live at home with your mum? Yes. Okay, so you're not paying rent. You're not paying for, you know, you, you, you may chip in for, you know, utilities here and there. Do you smoke? Yes. That's where some of your money's losing. I don't smoke. Do you drink? Well, only want to go out on the weekends. Is that every weekend? Well, yeah. That's where you're pissing your money away. You were pissing it away because you weren't being frugal. Now, I'm not talking about being an uptight Jew, okay? I'm talking being financially responsible. Do you know what I mean? Yes. This is this is why everyone calls it toxic loans. When a bank loans you three million dollars to buy a mansion and you've barely got three dollars to your name, you know that's a toxic loan. Well, she would be sort of ripe for that sort of scam. You know what I mean? Not me. She wouldn't pay. She she would barely make the minimum payments on her credit cards. I would pay my balance off in full. Yes, granted, I would be skint. You know, middle to the end of the month. But I don't owe anyone anything. Right. You know? And even the dog agrees. Now, one of the things that, that, again, feminists keep talking about is they don't know how to handle it. Well, I turn around and said to her, I'm like, Sandra, have you gone in for your review for your pay raise? And she goes, no, I didn't even know we had those. I'm like, do you not read that pamphlet they send you when they hire you? What pamphlet? And I'm like... It's still in your drawer. She left it in her drawer in a vanilla envelope. She'd been working there for two years. That goes to show how dunce she was. <laughs> she never opened it up. She goes, I thought it was just a letter I failed to deliver. And I'm like, and you still got it? You know? Needless to say, she opened it up and she finally realized she was eligible for at least six pay raises. Because she didn't read her packet when she came in. Oh, good lord. Which listed your uh, uh, healthcare benefits, if anything. It listed what times of the year you could have off. It listed 
uh, uh, spousal things. For example, say say we was living in England, so and I was still working there. Yes. And I could look at this, the packet, and it's okay. Your wife is eligible for dental, uh, dental, uh, not optical. Do you see what I'm saying? It would list what packages you were for, and they would take the pr- the, the premium payments out of your paycheck in advance for you. So okay. I I didn't have to worry about that. Do you see? Yeah. They, they, and they even said, "Do you want a four hundred one k?" You know, we'll talk. To, we'll, we'll go up to, fi- the, to, to the third, no, fifth floor, which is financial. Go in there, talk to James. James will sort you out with a four hundred one k. You know, she didn't even have that. Churchill. She didn't even have a four hundred one k. Oh and, wow! And I had a I, I had a four hundred one k. I cashed out when the moment I I I, I quit. I cashed out. Oh, took, of course. You know, cashed it out, took my money, and I, I bought my nan something nice, bought my mum something nice, you know, treated my family, you know, went on a little mini vacation to Ibiza, you know, uh-huh. had fun, came home, pissed my own complaints, I was broke, but all my credit cards were paid for. That yeah. holiday, I paid for it. I didn't put it on a credit card. I paid cash. Right. You know, I, I so I know I was good. If I needed to, to pay my rent with my credit card, I knew I was good, you know. Right. Well, I, I'm going to say this right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I used to do. Mm-hmm. I used to run in, in the PRCA. Mm-hmm. And I used to train horses. Mm-hmm. Well, I when I was training back when I was 16, okay, this is when I was 16, I made more than the two male horse trainers that was there. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't because they weren't as good as me. It was because I flat out told the people that were coming to me, you want my name associated with your horse, you're going to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's like, it's like a brand. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm the sort of person, yeah, I, I, I've worn, you know, kicks I, I and i've worn three stripe adidas and adidas and fubu and you know i've worn you know how i've worn fucking dmx's you know i've worn like four thousand dollar sneakers but i've also worn twenty dollar sneakers you know right but the sad part of it is i i guess what i'm trying to get at is there was a girl back then that me and her were neck and neck okay mm-hmm Basically, when I wasn't winning, she was. When she wasn't winning, I was. And she trained horses as well for the same thing I did. Well, for them to get a horse trained by me, they were looking at anywhere from, if it was an easy fix, 5000 If it was a complete from scratch, you know, they bring me a colt. They were looking at almost $40,000 for me to train their horse. Mm -hmm. Her, she was only charging $700 for easy fixes and maybe $5,000 for uh, from scratch. Mm -hmm. She she underpriced herself in the market. Again, it's the same as overpricing yourself in the market. I know some model model builders who make really beautiful movie-grade props but they charge like ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. They charge themselves right out the market when I can put the exact same model together with the exact same parts and you know, granted not in the exact same time frame, but I can do it for a fraction of the cost, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and again, that's one of the again, again back to feminism. There are I I I'm I'm gonna make this statement right now, okay? Every feminist I've ever met, like through YouTube or even in real life, okay, I have not felt a twitch in my nethers towards them. <laughs> I I would rather take my penis and stick it in a blender. <laughs> not a single one of them is in any way remotely sexually attractive at all. Anita Sarkeesian, okay, one of the world's most pro- prof- prophetic... Uh, 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 um, basically, m- the, world, the world's most known feminist, next to her mentor, that is. Yes. Um, has uh, uh, it, it, you know she's been on the Colbert Report for crying out loud. You know, she's she's been on centervised TV. You mm-hmm. know, 
and she has this look about her like and again i don't mean to say this in a bad way but the looks about her screams angry old jew she looks like that angry old jewish woman who and this is the thing none of them have kids none of them have kids Lacey green she's probably the youngest feminist i know next to emma watson and you're probably thinking you know Um, I've seen videos from this Lacey Green. Well, no, no, Emma Watson is the actress who is in Harry Potter. Oh, the redhead. Yes, she played. Um, she played Hermione. Hermione. Yes. Well, she is a prolific feminist. Okay. And yet she keeps going on about how the male actors got paid more than she did. Actually, no, they didn't. She would go on about she, and she still to this day she still goes on about it. Yet there is actual evidence that proves that she's talking out her ass. Okay. Like completely out of her ass, so bad that it gaped her ass on the way out. Lovely. Because the mo- it's a movie directed by a man, yes, but it's a story written by who, male or female? Female. She is the lead female role yeah do you see what i'm saying so it's not like rose petals haven't been fucking thrown on the ground by vestal virgins for her as it is and yet now she continuously wants to 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 kick everyone while they're down oh good grief do you see what i'm saying And, and it's annoying as hell oh yeah because she's she, she's going out of her way to say that it, it, it's every woman's right on this planet should be equal to that of men. And don't get me wrong, I am a staunch believer that, that every human being on this planet, regardless of your sexual orientation, that yes, that does include gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, transgender, you know, it, 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 it includes every fucking human being should have the same rights, whether you make a million dollars or whether you make five pennies. You know, you should all be treated the same. Greet the greet the janitor with the same amount of respect as you do the CEO. You know? Right. Now, this is the problem, though. This is the big problem. That's not what feminists want. Feminists only want what they want. And as they keep saying, oh, well, it's about equal rights for women in third world countries. You live in a first world country. What? You live in England, yes? That's a first world country, is it not? Yes? Yes, it is. Anita Sarkeesian, you know, Lacey Green, they go on about third world countries. But you live in a first world country. Move to that third world country, then bitch, then moan, then whine, then complain. Then someone might take you seriously. Right. Anita Sarkeesian has been known to constantly panhandle her Patreon and her Kickstarter right after she's apparently received death threats, which the FBI and the local police have openly said they're not credible in any way, shape, or form. The FBI has said, their cyber division has said, there's no way any of these threats are credible. The, 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 one of the threats that uh, uh, um, a CAD was mentioning listed a specific attack in Canada, okay, and this is apparently a death threat that Anita Sarkeesian took, that got through going to the University of Utah. Okay, so the U of U, okay, she okay. was supposed to, do a, uh, supposed to do a speech at the U of U, and she didn't do the speech because she got a death threat that was so exact that keeps talking about a, a an attack that happened in Canada, okay, that was so obscure that it never even made the mainstream media. Okay. How, how can the attacker know that shit? Because uh-huh. back then it was aimed at, fe- at feminists. Why is it all of a sudden a feminist speecher shows up at the U of U, of what I might add, and yet at the exact same time gets a death threat 
that constantly keeps throwing back to another attack that happened to another uh, another feminist uh, person. You see what I mean? It doesn't make it. And why would he say, I'm going to the University of Utah. I'm a student there from Canada. And I have a semi-automatic rifle, several pistols, and pipe bombs. <laughs> Do you think that campus security, let alone Salt Lake City Police, is not going to pull aside every Canadian fucking person at that university and search them for said semi-automatic weapon, for oh, said yeah. pistols, for said pipe... But that was not good enough for Anita Sarkeesian. She cancelled the fucking talk. Even though University of Utah paid her. <gasps> she got paid even though she said no. Oh my god. And lo and behold, right after that, it was like, oh, and my emergency Patreon is up now. If you wish to donate, she got $400,000. From douchebag, asshole, cunt nugget, neckbeard, fedora wearing fucking douchebags who want to get inside a feminist's knickers. Oh. That's the only reason. No, that is the only reason why there is male. Feminists. They want to get inside your vagina. That's it. That's all they want. That's all they want. There is no such thing as a male feminist. They're just douchebag, fucking cock cold little bitches that hide in a closet, jacking it while watching their wife get hammered by a great big fucking bull black guy or a guy that's as hung as me. Okay? Plain and fucking simple. Yeah. There is no such thing as a male feminist. Now, no. the actual dictionary term... Here, I'll even pull it up. The dictionary term for feminist. Ready? As defined by the Oxford Dictionary. The doctrine advocating social, political, and or other rights of women equal to those of men. Okay, so women have already established that they're getting paid less. Okay, or that 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 men seem to have a hierarchy over them, right? <laughs> well, at least the feminist has. So why does a man who's apparently already made it wants to give a woman a hand up if he doesn't want to put his dick up her? Exactly. I literally just destroyed every male feminist on this planet because dun 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 he's revealed my master plan damn it you know and if if you find such fug ugly women like Anita Sarkeesian pretty or fuckable dude just 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 go to Nevada go to a brothel and fuck a whore okay seriously you might actually get some that way Exactly, because there's absolutely no fucking chance that Anita Sarkeesian, Miss, oh, I've never played games in my life yet, every other fucking chance I get, I openly say, oh, I play video games all the fucking time, yet you constantly misquote shit from games that you've never fucking played on Twitter, and when gamers react and say, have you ever fucking played that game, all of a sudden it's like, I'm getting harassed, ban him, and so Twitter closes their accounts. What the? Yeah. Yeah. If you try to tweet directly at Anita Sarkeesian with anything other than, Oh, praise the Queen Feminazi! She literally runs to Twitter saying, They're harassing me! They're misogynistic! Burn them! Burn them! Burn them! And your account will either get a warning or it will get closed. What the? F because she cannot take criticism. Oh my god. Yet she wants god. to critique and criticize games in general, yet she herself cannot take criticism to fucking save her life. <laughs> in some cases, quite literally, with the quote unquote death threats she gets. <laughs> yet she doesn't want to say the fact that her mentor, who started the whole quote unquote feminist movement, is actually a man hating, rug munching, Butch Dyke, who's also a communist. Oh my god. Oh yeah, let's not mention that, huh? 
No. Let's, let's not mention that the person I uphold as high as fucking Jesus and the Lord Almighty is actually a dirty little fucking rug munching black chick who's actually a fucking communist <laughs> and hates America. Oh, good Lord. Again, that's something that she doesn't want to fucking have it publicly known, yet she constantly quotes this woman and her books. Oh, so it's not like a smart person is going to go cut, paste in a Google search engine and find this shit out, Anita! You <laughs> stupid fucking tart! <laughs> I can't believe that the Colbert Report actually had this stupid woman on his fucking show. That's why I stopped watching the Colbert Report. I literally, I stopped watching it. I removed it from my DVR. I just, I just stopped watching it. I did. I, I literally just stopped watching it because of that fucking shit. Okay, well, let me make this statement, okay? To all of the FEMA Nazis or whatever the frack they want to call themselves, women have just as many rights as men. Mm -hmm. We get paid the same as a man. Because if we got paid less, Every damn company in the world would only hire females. Mm, mm. And that's another thing feminists go on about. How there's more men in the Senate than women. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I am a woman. Back when I was 16, I was raped. Mm -hmm. Granted, there at one time was a law they were trying to overpass that without the man's consent, a woman could not terminate a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Women, if you're smart, and something like that went through, and you had a baby out of those circumstances, honey, be smart. Use your damn brains and take that motherfucker to the goddamn cleaners. This message brought to you by Crisco. <laughs> because with him saying, no, I do not consent to you giving up, the, you know, for you uh, terminating the baby. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? You can say, well, because you don't consent and this was out of this situation. I want this. I want this. And I want this. And trust me, any lawyer, anybody that has half a brain would know you can get every damn thing you want. Mm hmm But again, it, 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 it's... It's not that, but again, point proven, they're saying that, that there, there's more men in the Senate than women. There are more laws passed about a woman's body than a man's. And all these other things. And I'm like, okay. You want to talk about jobs where women are the most dominant force? Pornography. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Right now. It is virtually impossible for a heterosexual straight man to make it in pornography unless he brings with him at least four other women that is willing to work with him and or work for the same company. They do not hire men. Unless you're gay. That is sexual discrimination. You don't hear feminists talking about that shit. Oh no. The most powerful, most influential woman on the planet is a porn actress. And you actually know her name. If you're telling me Jenna Jameson, I'm going to... Yes. Yes. No. Jenna Jameson is the most influential woman in porn and has been for the last 15 years. If she says, no, you ain't working in porn, you don't get to work in porn, period. Even across the world, into other countries. Her reach is that far. She's not a man. She's a woman. And ironically, she's also one of the, the, the higher-ups in the top ten of the board of directors of a Canadian porn company that is the largest in the world. <laughs> So how's that for feminism? <laughs> huh? Feminists? Hmm? Stick that in your fucking pipe and smoke it, your neck beard in fucking tarts. Seriously. 
Again, something that they don't want to talk about. Feminists only want to stick to the issues that concerns them. And you want to know what those issues is? <laughs> if it has a dick, it's his fault. <laughs> That's it. That 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 sums it. It sums it right up. That that literally sums it up. If you have a penis, it's your fault. Even male feminists, which we've already destroyed, openly say, yes, if you have a penis, it's your fault. But you have a penis. No, I don't. I had mine cut off by my girlfriend. <laughs> so why are you with her? Because I want the pussy. You got no dick! Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun! Here's your sign, you retard. Seriously. Fucking seriously, people. Feminism will destroy everything you hold dear. The moment you have a feminist friend meet your other friends, game over, man. Game over. Game over. It's like having someone with leprosy. Seriously. Yes, I am I am comparing a feminist to a person suffering from leprosy. Mm-hmm. Because no matter how many times you argue with actual facts and concrete evidence, okay, that feminism does not exist because it's an idea, it will always exist. Same as Islamophobia. Every, every person who has something bad to say about Muslims or 9-11 or, or, or terrorists or jihadists or, or ISIS or whatever, they'll say, oh, that's just Islamophobia. No, it ain't. I'm fucking afraid for my life. And if I choose to blame neck-bearded fedora-wearing fucking feminist douchebags, they're the ones I'm going to be shooting at in a firefight. Mm -hmm. That's not a phobia. That's called I'm afraid for my fucking life as well as my wife's. Now, this is another thing. Most people don't seem to understand where feminism uh, 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 originates from. It originates from... Uh, England, France, and Latin America. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> a women's movement is what it's called. Feminism is a, a is a, a, a is a woman's movement. Yeah, a woman's movement and a as they call it a political right to, f to freedom of speech. Okay, which is yeah. true. Which is true. To bash anything with a penis. Oh, Lord. Because it's always the man's fault. It's always misogynistic. We're playing a video game, okay? Me and you are playing, uh, um, I don't know, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're driving along, you know. You're playing a male character. I'm playing a female character, okay? We, okay. St we stop, you say, I want to fuck that hooker. Now, as a male character, you can. But as a female character, I can't. There is okay. no let. There is no lesbian mechanics in the game. Okay. So, moral dilemma: the man in me wants to watch the the hooker get fucked, right? Yeah. Or the stripper dance, but the female character that I'm portraying cannot, according to feminists. That's the uh, uh, um, subject. Something dichotomy. It, it, it's stupid. It's, it, it, uh, object, subject, dichotomy. Subjects act, objects are acted upon. Well, yeah, duh. How about I hit you in the head with an object? You know? I can't hit you in the head with a subject. Oh, wait, here you go. Feminism. Wham. Did you feel that? I hit you in the head with feminism. Did, did you see how stupid that fucking sounds? You learn that stupid shit in kindergarten. But they're going on about how hookers should have a last name, a birthday, mothers and fathers, and an interesting background character. Really? Okay, you're in your car, she's giving you head, and all you hear is... You know, it's like, what are you trying to say? I'm just telling you how my day went. I'm not interested in your day, keep sucking. You know? <laughs> do, you, do, do you see what I'm saying? Do, do, do you pick up a hooker just to talk to her in a, ca in a cafe? To find out how her day's going? 
No. No. Do you see what I'm saying? You don't go to a strip club and she's standing there and go, put your clothes on and tell me about your day. Yeah. That doesn't make any fucking sense. And and, and they go on about booth babes at, at, at Comic Cons and and and, 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 and you know, conventions and things like this, you know, and, and how they're lowering the standards of women around the world. Why? Because they actually have a beautiful body, a nice smile, and a fucking good personality, and they want to show it off. They're being paid to stand next to a car that is god awful ugly, which actually makes them look even more prettier. Yes, I'm looking at you, Bugatti. <laughs> Did you see what I'm saying? They they get why? Because you're fugly. Because you got hit with the ugly stick falling down from the ugly family tree, hitting every fucking branch, twig, and leaf before you finally crumpled as the mess of shit on the fucking ground. Don't hate her because she's pretty. Don't hate her because she actually has a personality. Don't hate her because she's working her hustle and making paper and you are forced to panhandle to sad fucking 40 year old fucking bastards who live in their mother's basement with neck beards and fedoras. Oh, I'm going to wait for my SSI check to come in. And when it does, I'm going to send you $200 on the third. Seriously. For some, for some reason, I kept picturing him looking like Porky Pig. But, you know. <laughs> but, but do you see what I'm saying? That's what Anita Sarkeesian has to go to. That's what Lacey Green has to go to. Now, don't get me wrong. Lacey Green is somewhat remotely attractive after about 20 beers. Anita Sarkeesian, there's not enough booze on this planet to make that fucking woman beautiful you know what there are reasons why i honestly believe that muslims think women should wear burqas because they took a look at they look at they looked at a picture of anita sarkeesian and god fuck me cover that moose's face up now she is a horse-faced choppy looking fucking prick okay and i don't even think a burqa could cover that ugly you know same as a hummer dust cover just really couldn't cover mike Right. You know? Love you, Mike. Rest in peace, brother. But do you see what I'm saying? Feminism is... It's going to... It's. I mean, for fuck's sake, it's already destroyed one relationship I've had. Okay. Between me and my ex, okay, she had a friend called Tracy. Okay? Mm -hmm. And according to Tracy, if I didn't give my ex everything she wanted there and then, that's abuse. <laughs> that's feminism. That's not abuse. I worked my fucking ass off. Come home. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. I'm dirty. I want to have a bath or a shower. Change my clothes. You know, change my clothes. Have a bath. Have a shower. Get something to eat in me. Sit down for five fucking seconds with my daughter. You know? Spend some time with her. But no, no, no. I get a baby shoved in my face. She runs out the door with Tracy, her girlfriend. And it's like, we'll see you later. I'm like, okay. So I've got my daughter in a bassinet on the bed while I'm taking my clothes off. Trying to cover myself because I don't want her to see, you know, daddy's junk and think anything. You know, again, you know, I'm trying to think ahead here. I don't want to scar my daughter for life. You know. Then I had her in a bassinet in the bathroom, you know, nowhere near the bath because I didn't want to get her wet or anything, you know, having her in my bath, get out, get dressed, get, you know, still carrying her around with me into the kitchen to make myself some toast and a cup of tea. Okay. You know, and, and I got some, 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 uh, 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 uh Weetabix mm -hmm. for my daughter, you know, got some milk, got some hot water, put it together as a mush paste for her, you know. Okay. And I was giving her some wheat a bix as I was eating some toast. And I believe I was watching... Wasn't Doctor Who? It was one with Captain Jack Harkness. Captain Jack the... the um... he, no, he had his own spin-off show. Yeah. Uh, Torchwood. 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 I was watching an episode of Torchwood with my daughter at the time. And my ex comes strolling in with her fucking friend 
and they were both fucking blind drunk. They almost fell over walking into the living room, almost fell on top of each other, and somehow that was my fault, because apparently I moved the sofa. <laughs> you know, made them some coffee to try and help them sober up, you know? And I told her, look, it's three in the morning. I've got to go to bed. I've got to get up at five. I've got two, I've got two hours worth of sleep at that. And I can't do that now because you're drunk off your fucking ass and you can't take care of our own daughter. You shouldn't talk to her like that. You're just being abusive. Do you no, know what? you weren't being abusive. You were being fucking honest. So you want to know what I did? I took a week's worth of clothes for myself and my daughter and I went to my nan's. Good. And my nan took care of of my daughter for a week. God rest in peace, Nan. Love you, darling. She took care of my daughter while I went to work. And I come home, and when I come home, my Nan's like, there's a bath run for you, there's some clean clothes out for you, and your dinner's in the uh, dinner's in the microwave, just heat it. I'm like, thank you, Nan, what is it? Oh, it's just Yorkshire pudding. You know, my Nan, you know, she, especially on a Sunday, she'd do a full roast, you know, roast and potatoes, carrots, peas, you know, gravy, mashed potatoes, you know, the works, you know? I'm like, thank you, Nan. Had my bath. You know, put my clean clothes on. Came down, ate my dinner. And my daughter's sitting in a little high chair that I used to sit in as a baby. My Nan never threw anything away. The exact same fucking high chair I sat in as a baby. You know? And there's a picture of my daughter in the exact same high chair eating mushed up carrots and mashed potato. Mm -hmm. You know? And there I am. I'm eating mine, you know? My ex finally strolls in and she's like, where the fuck have you been? I'm like, where the fuck have you been? It's been a week. A week. Well, me and Tracy, we were celebrating. What were you celebrating? Seriously, what were you celebrating? That took you a week away from your daughter. Needless to say, that was when me and you first got back into contact with each other. So you can understand quite, quite literally why I ran to my lifeboat like you. Yes. You know, because that was the shit that was going on in my life constantly. I'd have friends call me up saying, hey, you want to come out this weekend? I'm like, no, I can't go take care of my daughter. Well, where's your girlfriend? You know, where's her mum? She'll probably be out at the club. If you see some Larry fucking black haired fucking dark skinned chick, you know, wearing a fucking neon purple mini skirt and fucking push up bra. That's probably her. And lo and fucking behold. Ta-da, there she was. How did he know it was her? She had my name tattooed on her arm. Oh my god. Mm. Which, when I left, she had it removed. <laughs> yep. And so... <laughs> we actually have a, a guest who wants in. Okay. <laughs> Coronado Sanchez. Oh, good lord. Coda. And so, yeah. I, I've dealt with feminism firsthand. You know? I have dealt with it. Hey, Coronado, how you doing? Hey, Cobra. Welcome to the Politically Incorrect Podcast, where freedom of speech comes to be abused and die we are talking about feminism versus freedom Oof. yes we are talking about a very controversial topic uh, i was just going on about a actual story where uh, feminism actually destroyed one of my relationships um and my wife of course as you know michelle she's not a feminist um she believes that if you use your fucking brain <laughs> you'll realize that there is no such thing as a feminist cause that women do get paid the same amount as men if not more you just know have to know how to apply it right so what about you have you come across any uh, feminist things my friend uh me uh yeah no not yet you, lucky you Seriously, lucky you. Stay away from women, especially ones that have, <laughs> especially ones that have neck beards and fedoras, or no guys that have neck beards and fedoras. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, but neck beards are just pedophilic. You look like a pedophile. There is no way you can rock a beard full of hair and no face. 
Seriously, you, it looks like you, you, you got put into a, a, an epic fucking sucking vacuum cleaner toilet and it pulled all your facial hair off and left your neck. It, it just, no. It, it, it doesn't look right, yeah. Fuck, even, even Boogie2988 at least tries to rock a little bit of facial hair. Right. You know? He's but, actually growing it out, too. Yeah, I know, but, but you see, that's because he's got a, a testosterone issue. So he's having to take yep. growth, growth hormones and stuff, so. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, and, and it, it's, we're talking about people like Anita Sarkeesian and uh, um, Lacey Green and all these other YouTube feminists who who want to go out of their way to make men's life a living fucking hell. Um, and, 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 and here's a prime example of it. Ready? Remember me telling you about male feminists only want to get, in, get inside a feminist's vagina, honey? Mm-hmm. They're making an all-female cast only Ghostbusters. What? Yep. The, 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 is that shit? the new Ghostbusters is going to be all female cast. They've already begun shooting. Mm. They've already got the props made. They've already, and the thing is, it looks like it's a fan made fan made film. It doesn't look like any movie studio has put more than two seconds of thought into this, and that leads me to believe that the person who came up with the bright idea is a male feminist who wants to climb up inside Anita Sarkeesian's vagina. <laughs> Right. If I make a feminist friendly movie, I might get some pussy. You live in California, dude. Just go to fuck. Oh my god, dude. Dude, seriously. Go to San Francisco. Pay a transvestite. Right. You won't know the difference. She looks like a dude. Trust me. And, and, and so, they're also rumored to be doing a new Goonies movie. Finally, I might add. But guess what? The majority of the cast. Dun dun dun! Female. Seriously, there's only going to be like two male actors, and Josh Brolin, who was in the original, has said no, he's not been contacted. It's good for him. Doesn't need to be in it. He doesn't. But my my fear is simply this: if they're going to do an all female Ghostbusters and a majority female cast Goonies, I think I have, I think I know what what the feminists' plan is. I think their plan is to fundamentally deep root themselves into everything that resembled anything to a man's childhood or growing up and corrupt it so that when he finally gets into that fucking argument with his feminist girlfriend and she goes, well, I remember when the Goonies was all female and be like, the Goonies was never all female. Yeah, and she shows him the new released version of Goonies, which totally yeah, fucking warps fuck his mind. Literally warps his mind, and he's like, Aah! and he literally ends up having like a mini stroke, and he's just this crumpled ball of snot and fucking vomit and, and tears as he's rocking back and forth, hunched up in a ball in a corner, just mumbling Goonies, 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 literally to himself. That is the feminist's idea, is to slowly deep root themselves into everything that has to do with a man like a cancer. No more truffle shuffles, no more truffle shuffles. Well, yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah, a woman can't do a truffle shuffle, don't you know? That's fat shaming. That, yeah. That's body shaming. I'm like, okay, so you've destroyed every party trick that every fat guy can every any do at any party. Come on, seriously, you're 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 now attacking fat people. Seriously, feminists, it, you're you're going about the same way as, as the Third Reich. Okay, let's let's start a war with England, with Poland, with the rest of Europe. Oh, and now 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 let's start a war with, with Russia. How did we lose? There's your answer, feminists. Pick a fucking thing, stick to it, and don't declare war on anything else. Otherwise, they will crush you like the insignificant little cunt bug that you are. And trust me, a cunt bug is that tiny little fucking thing. Like, you're laying down and you're in bed and you're all comfy and it's really fucking cold outside. There's snow and shit. And you've got this great big doubly quilted blanket on you and you're all snugly warm and everything. And all of a sudden, your bladder's like, you got to pee. And you're like, oh, bollocks. And you and, and, and literally you see the toilet. You see it. You know it's like but it's like it's like all the way over there. Oh, I'll just hold it for a while. And then no, 
no, no, no, no, now you can't. So you jump out of bed, you run in there, you try and pee, you stub your toe on the way there, so you're hopping like crazy, and then you accidentally step on something that your little sister dropped on the floor in the bathroom, so now your other foot's bad as well. So you come back, you know, cunt, cunt, fuck, shit, shit, fuck, 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 you know, but you finally climb back into bed and it's fucking freezing cold, and you're like, oh, son of a bitch. So you've got to stand there for another 20 minutes wiggling and kicking your legs up and down, and fucking Christ knows what else, and getting your electric blanket and turning that fucker back on, and Christ knows what else just to get warm again that is literally a cunt bug it's one of those things that you you know happens you don't talk about it because you're embarrassed because now some you're afraid someone else, oh, that's never happened to me but in truth it has happened to every person on this planet everyone and if it has yeah. and if it hasn't it soon will then all of a sudden the electric blanket doesn't work mm-hmm because you accidentally kicked it, the, kicked it out the extension cord. Because there's never a plug socket near your bed, or if there is, the bed the, the bed frame blocks it. And you're standing there for like 20 minutes trying to wiggle the bed just so you can get the plug in there. And you're like, get the fuck in there! It's like USB ports. <laughs> have, have, have you ever noticed when you try to plug something into a USB port, you look at the orientation, and you're like, that's right, but doesn't fit. Okay, so you, so you turn it upside down. Bob doesn't fit. You turn it back the exact same way you first had it. Blip fits the first time. Yeah. See that 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 is a cunt. That 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 is a cunt bug. That's that's what I like to call a cunt bug. Cause cause you, you it, it frustrates you, and you're like you you can't you know. But it's a bug that everyone has had. Everyone like extension cords. You, you buy a brand new extension cord and it's all nicely wrapped and you, you unwrap it and you use it a couple of times and there's that one time you have someone else wrap it up, you unravel it and there's a knot in there somehow and you're like, how the fuck did that get in there? <laughs> you know? Same, same, same as pubic hair. Okay, and this is where the podcast gets a, little, gets a little bit dirty. Ready? Have you ever noticed... When you go to buy a brand new book that's still wrapped in the cellophane or a brand new board game and it's wrapped in the cellophane and you take the cellophane off, for some reason, on the box, there's either a bodily hair or a piece of bodily fluid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you're like... But somehow hair gets there. Yeah, and you're like, how the fuck did that get there? Seriously, it's one of those things that bug me as well. Dad, I, I could go on forever with the things that bug me. I mean, I really could. I could go on forever. I'm not going to because this podcast would go on for like 20 years. <laughs> so, I mean, like like batteries. Okay, batteries is another bug of mine. There's that little diagram thing molded into the plastic of how the batteries are supposed to go in. So you follow it, thinking that's how it's supposed to be, right? You put the the back cap on, doesn't work. You stand there, you take the back off, and start rotating the batteries around, pressing a button to see if the TV or the controller or, or something does something. Nope. You hand it to a friend. He takes the batteries out, puts them in the opposite direction, puts the cover on, and it starts working. I swear to God, Asians do that just to laugh at us. You know, they're at, they're, they're at the assembly factory. It's like, let's fuck with these Americans. <laughs> you know, seriously, stop it. It's not funny. It's not funny, China. It's not. Just stop. Just stop. It's not funny. <laughs> Swear to God, I will come to your country and I will destroy it worse than Godzilla. Seriously, stop. Just stop. Bastards. Mm. And, and, and one of the other things that really bugs me is people who try to find ways of usurping municipal laws or, 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 or codes. Okay, for example, in the state of Utah, gambling is illegal. You cannot gamble. No. You, you cannot willingly hand over money to someone else and say, I bet you X amount. And then they in return give you money back. That is illegal in the state of Utah. But you can go into casinos that are in Utah and get what's known as coins or or game tickets remember at the carnival there was those machines that would spurt out those little paper tickets and you and you take them to get stuffed animals and shit well that's what casinos are doing now here in the state of utah you win tickets not money and then you take those tickets and you can hand those tickets in for prizes 
like a trip to Hawaii or a brand new car or, or do you see what I'm saying? They have found ways to usurp past municipal bullshit laws. It, it's like earlier on, on the Facebook group, Pale Hands sent me an image of a shot glass with the Mormon temple on it. Yeah, ain't that funny? Yeah, and, and it's like, who the fuck is this for? You know, because you know, Utah's a dry state. You know? So, under that casino thing, what if you fucking spend all your money and you're hoping to get money back? What's the fucking point? You ain't gonna get your money back. No. Because, again, this is what I was trying to explain explain, explain to my friend Leslie, who is with me. Um, there's a... There, there's a... Uh, um, a game called Deal or No Deal. Well, in this arcade center, again, you you pay the guy money, he gives you a little credit, basically looks like a credit card, and you swipe it through the machines. That's what stops the gambling rule. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you're okay. not using US currency. And so, as you're playing, it doesn't spurt out money, it spurts out tokens that are digitally put onto the card. And then you take the card and you hand it back to the cashier and he says, you have 300 tickets, this is what you're eligible for. And these little lights come on over these little boxes. And it, you, know, you, you see the product of what you can get, an iPod or whatever, you know? And mm-hmm. in, I was trying to explain to him, he goes, okay, the maximum amount of tickets you're allowed to win on Deal or No Deal is 400 tickets at two credits a game. There is no way a casino can actually make money at two credits per play with a 400 ticket payout. None. There's none. Mathematically, ethically, it cannot do that. So I let my friend Leslie play 10 games of Deal or No Deal. And each and every time he failed to get the 400 ticket case. And he got kept getting low ball numbers like you know 10 tickets, 12 tickets, whatever. Okay. And turns out he had the, 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 the 10 ticket case. And he goes, oh, I made seven tickets. I played three games at the same arcade machine. He just got up. I sat there and played three hands. And I walked away with almost 700 tickets. Oh, God. Because <laughs> each, each time I mathematically figured it out what cases have what tickets. And the 400 case was the float point, which means that was a case you are never going to get mathematically. It's already been removed. The maximum you were going to get was maybe 100 tickets. And lo and fucking behold, I got the 100 tickets every single time. But the dealer always offered me more than 100 because the 400 was still in play. Do you see? And so I walked, yep. away, I walked away with almost 700 tickets and looked at him and said, that's how you do it. It's called integrity-based math so it's almost like card counting but yeah do you have no idea exactly and he goes okay do it to this machine so did it to that machine one in my i think it was like, like another 200 tickets you know and came back and the guy's like you've been here less than 45 minutes and you've won more tickets than a person i know who's been here for two years i'm like yeah <laughs> that's because you just need to know the mathematical formulas of how everything is so, so, again, I'm going to go back to the whole feminist thing. Feminism is like gambling. You're not going to win. The feminist isn't going to win. The person protesting feminism isn't going to win. No one is going to win. Period. At all. Bar none. No one is going to win. Because feminism is an idea. And the moment feminism does gain any kind of traction, what do you think men are going to do? They're going to come up with their own version of feminism. And now that's two clashing ideas. You just replaced feminism with manism with Christianity and the freaking and the Romans. Yeah. How, how the Romans treated the freaking Jews or whatever. The Christians. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You, you literally just replaced religion with, a, with an idea, which is religion. Religion it in itself is an idea. There is no actual fucking credible facts or evidence, concrete-wise, that proves that any one religion is correct. Talk to a Christian. Tell them, where's the Spear of Destiny? They'll, they'll either tell you, ask you, what is the Spear of Destiny? 
Oh, they'll tell you that the spear of destiny was, 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 was uh, is in the Vatican. Now, no, it's not. The spear of destiny was the spear used by the Roman to finally skewer Jesus in the ribs to end his suffering. Okay? I know this. I'm Roman Catholic. I know this. Right. I went to Sunday school. Don't fuck with me on this. Okay? <laughs> Where is the spear of destiny? Because it was told that the Roman, because uh, it, it, in the Bible and everything else, Old and New Testament, the Roman officer who actually stabbed Jesus portrayed against the Roman Empire and fled with the spear of destiny. Now, the, Ro the Catholic Church has several representations of what they think the spear of destiny is. But it is not the Spear of Destiny. And it's called the Spear of Destiny because it's rumoured that if he who holds the Spear of Destiny can actually speak to God. Again, ask any hardcore Catholic, where is the Spear of Destiny? It's like when you ask every Mormon, where are the gold plates? Where are the gold plates that was handed to Joseph Smith by angels? Where are they? Where are they? Where are the gold plates? Do you see what I'm saying? He stuck his head in a bucket and claimed he heard voices. Yeah, it's called echoes, you twat. You know? Again, all religions are designed to control the masses. End of. End of. Catholic, Protestant, Roman, Muslim. It doesn't fucking matter what you... I mean, like me... I was baptized Catholic when I was a baby. Went to Sunday Same school. Here. Went to went, here. went to Sunday school. Did all my prayers. Did mind all my P's and Q's. And what opened my mind was when my dad died when I was ten years old. And the priest, every religious person I spoke to, my, my bishop, my, and everyone else kept saying, "Oh, God just moves in mysterious ways." How is it mysterious? He just killed my dad. That's not mysterious. That's blatant. You can go fuck yourself. So he wants to fuck me. I'm going to fuck him first. And after that day, I stopped going to Sunday school. I didn't stop my sisters or my brother or my nan or my mum from going. But they sure as hell tried to get me to go. Especially my nan. And I love my nan. Love you. Love you, nanny Monaghan. She would drag me to Sunday school. In, 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 oh. even, in my, even in my pajamas. I would not get dressed. I would not go. I had a I had an actual conscious of uh, 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 crisis conscience, and so I started looking at other faiths: Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, atheists, Roman Catholic, Irish Catholic. You know, I I started branching out. I spoke to rabbis. I spoke to to Buddhists. I spoke to Harry Krishnas. I spoke for like forty five minutes. To a fucking uh, uh, um, um, not a Harry Krishna. Oh, one of those fuckers that knock on your door. Jehovah's Jehovah's Witnesses. Witnesses. <laughs> I, I sat there. Witness knocking on the door. I actually, I actually talked to them for forty-five minutes to the point where they were saying, "We've really got to go now." Um, thank you, but we've really. I actually out talked them. <laughs> And I finally realized all religion is is designed to control weak-minded people. Your fear of the unknown, which is death. Think about it. Okay? Again, another argument you can have with, 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 with Christians and, and, and creationists. If God created the heaven and heavens and earth, he also created hell. Therefore, he also created the devil. Why would he create his own worst enemy? Then therefore he created homosexuality. Therefore he created. You see what I'm saying? You can literally list all these other things that Christians have openly gone against, and then ask him, okay, why is it Jesus hang around with thirteen dudes and no women, and the one woman he did hang around with was a whore and had someone else's child? Maybe it's because Jesus liked to squash the beef. <laughs> And that right there either pisses them off 
or it makes them go right back to their book and start reading again and then they finally it dawns on them. it's like holy shit he only hanged around with men not women men all the people that he did miracles to men not women men all the stories written about Jesus men not from a woman's point of view do you see what I'm saying then ask them why is there two testaments why is there the Old Testament and the New Testament because the Old Testament didn't appeal to younger generations because God was always angry so they redesigned the Bible to make it more hip with younger generations. Seriously? Fucking seriously? And then they keep, some people say, oh, it's because the Old Testament was written 400 years before God. How can a book be written 400 years before God if God created everything? Right. Who created the book? And quite literally, you can see every Christian's brain go, Nah, arrow 404 literally right in front of you their eyes blue screen of death Blink. because you've made them question literally every fucking thing in their life and why is it if God created everything why does he need money huh mega churches why does God need your money if God created everything he created money therefore he can just take what he created that's what you say when someone dies oh god's just taking back what he gave to us what my son yeah he's going back into god's arms now fuck you you hypocrite do you see what i'm saying guys yeah an idea like feminism or nazism or nihilism or or or, or whatever is an idea and no matter how many times you open a person's eyes to the fact that their idea is either broken, wrong, or is... Put it like this. If your idea can be abused in any way, shape, or form, like, like feminism, you've got the feminazis who want 10% of the male population culled, and I do mean that, they want to round up 10% of the male population on this planet and kill us. I'll repeat that. They want to grab 10% of the world's population that's male and kill us. Oh, good God. So that women get an equal chance. Motherfucker, you had an equal chance the moment your dad busted his nut inside your mum's cunt. Because there's your little tadpole trying to swim up there, and then there's me, the other tadpole, trying to swim up there. You beat me to the finish line. That's why you were born female. I wasn't born at all. I was squirted out of mum ten minutes later when she ran to the bathroom. <laughs> You already fucking won. The fact that the world has been laid at your feet and you're too fucking lazy to get up and actually get some and then you want to blame it on other fucking people. You lazy fuckers. Get off your ass and earn it. I've earned everything I have ever gotten, good or bad. My friends, my enemies, the house I live in, the house I want to live in, the house I don't live in, I have earned it all. I own it all. I face it all. If you don't like me for no reason, motherfucker, I'm going to give you a reason. <laughs> Just right. be patient. That's my life summed right there when I live stream and you don't like me raging when I, 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 I clearly call bullshit and have you know proof to call bullshit 
Fair enough. But when I'm playing and I kill you repeatedly and you call bullshit, am I going to say anything to the effect of what you did during my live stream? No. When I play my Hayabusa and I kill 19 of you suckers back to back without <laughs> getting a, taking a scrap of damage, you don't see me putting on a pair of sunglasses and saying, deal with it, do you? No. I show you how to avoid being number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to fucking number 19. Just watch my replay roundup videos on War Thunder. And lo and fucking behold, you don't become number 1. And you sure as hell won't become number 19. I teach you. I give you the tools, motherfucker. I ain't gonna fish for you. Fish for your fucking self. It's how I was raised. I don't want someone fishing for me. I can fish for my damn self. It's like the word vegetarian. Ancient tribal words for a person who cannot hunt, fish, or find food. Plain and simple. Yeah, I bow hunt. Yeah, I fish. Yeah, I even black powder hunt. I kill deer. I'll kill, I kill a deer. Fucking elk, a moose, a mountain lion, a pig. I don't fucking care. As long as my wife eats. And as long as my kids eat. Because you don't understand. It's not about my survival. I'm going to survive. I want to make sure that they survive. Same as my nation. Speaking of my nation, guys. Don't forget to check out Teespring. Links will be in the video description. Where you can take a look at some of the upcoming t-shirt artwork that will be readily available for you guys at the lowest possible price point that I can pass the savings on to you. Again, you have been listening to the Politically Incorrect Podcast where freedom of speech comes to be abused and die. I have been your host, Deceptive Cobras, my co-host, the lovely Baroness, and our late but always guest, Coda. Me! <laughs> and as always, guys, and I'll see you in the next one, my friends.